dans mon histoire, d'abord... In my work, the abandoned place was first a playground, puis comme sujet then a photographic subject, et finalement, and finally a space, an artist's studio. Atelier d'artiste. At first, these places were vestiges of war, fortifications in the Lorraine region. And then, later on in the city, they became warehouses, abandoned buildings, offices, slaughterhouses, hospitals. And so I used these spaces like a studio, in which I organized a mise en scène of painting and which I photographed, photography being the memory of this place and the memory of what had happened in this place. I started off with this very simple approach, this first phase using figurative painting. I'd arrive in the morning with my paint pots, camera, and go to work on the walls. I painted these figures as though they were self-portraits, a period of doubt and excitement which I expressed via these bodies floating, somewhat aggravated in space. And then immediately afterwards, I used spaces in which through linum paint I created sculptural forms. These were forms which became part of a pillar or which occupied a central place in the space I was photographing, the space in which I worked. And so these forms were simply drawn, hatched out in chalk. And then next, there was a long period where I used paint to create various transparent shapes, different forms. There's the whole exploratory aspect of the place. I go in, there's a photographic area which is quite vast and in which I can see myself intervening. And at this moment, I start imagining something. I've always used Polaroids to fix a place before starting work on it, to fix the final composition. And so I can follow, not on a daily basis, but quite regularly as the work evolves, its progress, the elements as they fall into place. I've always used a large format camera with a 4 by 5 inch chamber, an optical system with bellows, glass viewfinder, and visually, when I look through the viewfinder, I can see the image of the space I'm looking at inverted, because it's a direct optical system, there isn't a mirror in between to set the image right. On the viewfinder, I trace the form I want to reproduce, then I reproduce point by point that form in space, going back and forth between the space and the viewfinder. The space is discontinuous. There are walls, intermediate partitions, beams, all these elements are in relief. I need to imagine the space as flat, because the final image must be flat. And 
And then I realized how crucial architecture was to my work. So I first said to myself, if the space is too small, then I'll cut into the walls, enlarge the space in which I find myself. I'll try to restore to the space a dimension which already exists, but which was divided up according to the needs of the place. And I said to myself, why not build elements which have no other function than to capture light and finally create a discontinuous plane so as to express a kind of photographic substance. So then I started to build using a circular form, because circular forms allow for a certain freedom, because the spaces in which we live are usually orthogonal, vertical and horizontal, and the curve is not included, at least very rarely. And then I thought I'd draw a second circle, and in doing so, create a sort of ring, two concentric circles. But at the same time, these two circles determine a center, and it's like a sort of metaphor of the eye or of the lens, which let us see. For me, the forms I present are immediately visible and readable in the photograph. They are frontal. And when, on looking at the image, you see flaws, in an instant you enter the space through these imperfections and you deconstruct the space. And you see that a single form runs through a wall, through several walls, ten walls if need be. And finally, in the form I've drawn, I will use a single uniform color to harmonize all these different depths and reliefs. I photograph what exists in a real place, what has really materialized. But the images I create cannot speak as to what is really happening in this space. And then I gradually realized that my work had become more complex, enriched, and in addition to my photographic record, I now had notebooks of drawings, projects, writing, to the point where I decided to copy what these notebooks contained onto the walls in the spaces in which I worked, as though they were spoken words, sounds to complement the image. In Italy, in Rome, I did a whole series of works entitled Embrasure. So these works evoked the sun, the incandescence of the sun. The subject is central. It questions the nature of light, so necessary to photography. What is it? Where does it come from? A questioning about the world. Thus, the sun, which is millions of kilometers away, is a ball of flaming fire, which I tried to regenerate, reproduce in this place I worked in. I painted the walls completely red, a cinnabar red, which in Italian means ash, embers. And so I started painting the part of the room the camera sees. But then I actually painted the entire space, the floor, the walls, the ceiling, to have a total physical experience, as if dazzled by the sun. When I close my eyes, the image persists on the retina, and the inner world is entirely red. And in these abandoned places, one could feel this, while being at the same time totally isolated from the outside world. Red is so powerful, it's the heart of incandescence. And it was this kind of inner experience of light which I tried to get across.
Et en même temps, And at the same time as I worked on embrasure, I wrote in my notebook thoughts on painting, on space, a little about death, on solitude. And in the end, I said to myself, why not write directly on the walls and on the floor? And so you see some of these works with a text in perspective written all over the floor. En perspective, whose meaning is no longer comprehensible, but where certain words allow for a second meaning, parallel to the real meaning. For me, a piece is a concentrate of meditations, poetic moments, work, paint, light, photography. It's something which seems almost immaterial. And I imagine that it is this which produces the spiritual in art. I go walking in the mountains of Nepal quite regularly. Et je me suis demandé comment je pouvais And I asked myself how I could bring these journeys into my work, how I could bring in these walks in this landscape, which, in a different way, are also moments of meditation and poetry. And it was using ordnance survey maps, which are a kind of abstract, almost scientific representation of the real world, of reality, that I reproduced in the spaces using contour lines and the directions in the map, instead of color or chalk marks, the landscapes I have walked in. All my works are named after the city in which the work was done, with the year. So, for me, the problematic changes, shifts, according to the country I'm working in. The moment I became an artist, I immediately began to travel. And I said to myself, OK, mine is going to be a kind of wandering life, so I'll mark the spot where I am and try to create a network around the world of the places I've been, meaning that, in the end, I will have appropriated the nowhere.